now you're all being officially tracked, but I suspect you knew that. So hello, everybody. Happy, happy day. Um, if we haven't met, uh, I am Marnie. I see a lot of new faces on the call, so we're excited to have you here. Um, am I showing the, the uh, yep. correct it's up. You're good. Perfect. Um, so uh, just quick housekeeping. If you are new to us, do hope you have been uh, joining us or started joining us for Wednesdays um, for new to LCI. Uh, if you can't make those, we do have them recorded. So if you don't know what that means or don't know how to join them, just ping Amy in the chat, Amy Morell, and she will make sure you have all the things so you are in the know. Um, I'm excited today because we've got Juan Fernandez with us. Juan and I met, I'll introduce him in a second. We met a couple years ago and, and like worlds just recollided us. Um, and um, Juan and I together will be presenting at two different upcoming events. So uh, how about exchange in Dallas, February 28th to March 1st? Um, we're going to be talking about um, customer experience or customer success as a service. Um, so that's been something Juan's been passionate about. And then most of you know, I wrote the book on that. So we're excited about that. And then um, we're also going to be at CompTIA for CCF. Um, and Juan will talk a bit about that. So uh, if you can join either of those, uh, we'd love to have you for sure. Um, I'm going to put in the chat a piece of um, collateral or, you know, a, a blog that Juan wrote. Uh, so let me tell you how I met Juan. So Juan <laughs> Fernandez. Um, nope, not that one. Went too far. So, so Alex wrote a blurb in a book called the MSP Secrets Revealed. So I think page two, there it is. <laughs> I think page two of that book, Juan wrote in it. So this was Alex wrote it before Lifecycle Insights was out in the wild. And I think it was released right when we went live. So I was reading the book, loved what Juan had to say and reached out to him on LinkedIn. So we connected two years ago, um, like one year after I learned what MSP stood for. Uh, so we had kind of, we chatted a bit. I saw that Juan had won on Shark Tank. He'll tell a bit of that story today. Uh, was intrigued by all things. And then I don't know, just was it two months ago, Juan, we, we connected yeah. again and, yeah. uh, and, um, and we speak the same language when it comes to customer success and VCIO and QBR, et cetera. And so um, we've decided to do some collaborations, um, more, more to tell on all of those pieces, but um, that's what had me bring Juan to the party. Um, so Juan, if you could give a little bit of your background, you can tell any bit of that story that you want <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and where we're heading from here. Yeah, it, it's been an absolute pleasure, right? I, I, I think that's the best part about what we get to do in the channel is we get to meet such amazing and wonderful people. And then like, you never know what's gonna happen, right? I remember when Marnie reached out to me, it was like, I just came off a high of winning Shark Tank and I'll talk about that in a little bit. And it, so I was expecting a lot of people. And I mean, it was just crazy. And uh, she hit me up and she was surprised that I actually responded back. I remember her saying, I didn't think you were actually going to respond. And I was like, yeah, I talked to everyone that hits me up on LinkedIn, like even the spammers, right? So <laughs> sometimes I mess with those people. You never know what you're going to get. It's a mixed bag, right? So <laughs> I've got a guy I'd like to send you. You can talk for this one. He's hard to shake. <laughs> oh, is he the one that's uh, trying to sell a franchise? <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many franchise owners, people there could be there trying to sell franchises, but Anyway, long story short, we had an amazing time. We've always had a, a great opportunity to chat. Every time we do, it's just so much fun. And we just like love getting things done. So we've been doing quite a few fun things. And as I came back out, I built an MSP and uh, I took it from zero to about 20 million in just under six years. Uh, built the heck out of a monster MSP. And then I just left in September. I decided, you know what? I really love helping the community. It's kind of tired of building an MSP. Uh, so we decided that we were gonna go and uh, help the world. And so you guys all here today probably know all the same world problems that I know. And so we'll be talking through some of that today and I'll be sharing some of that stuff. So, but I do have something fun to share though. I stole this uh, from you not long ago, Marnie, and I don't oh, know, boy. I hope I don't get it. I hope I don't get in trouble. But- <laughs> uh, I pause the recording. Fortunately, I can cut and paste, so. Uh... <laughs> 
Yeah, you know, it was an interesting thing. I remember when I saw it the first time, right? Oh, it was something that was just super funny. And I just thought, oh, my God, I got to call Marnie and tell her somebody like blew her up. And so I took what you said, which I found out later you did. And I said, lifestyle, life cycle insights actually rocks. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So I don't know if ever, we've got some new partners on here. So if you have not checked out lifecycleinsights.sucks, you should absolutely go there. You'll see some of the folks on this call give their scathing reviews and we appreciate every single one of them. <laughs> so awesome. I thought, I thought it was super fun. Uh, so I wanted to just start off right there. I think Lifecycle Insights, let me just put it to you this way. As I grew a $20 million MSP, I've, this is number two, right? So I've done this a couple of times. Uh, it really would have changed my life had I found it as early on as I did after I had already created all the, all the hard roads of creating all these PDF documents on a quarterly business review, which we used to call it a, a tech review back when I started in 2015. We were just like, you know, we would talk about a topology technical review with the customer. And we had, we were taking all these technical terms and trying to make them sound cool, right? So we'll talk a little bit about that today, but I wanted to just share, I don't got a whole lot of slides, so I'm not going to kill you with slides. I don't have a ton. Marnie said, don't do slides. We like to just talk. But I, I feel like uh, it is important to know who you're talking to. And so I am a real person. I actually have a life and I do have a wonderful wife that has completely supported me through all of the chaos that I have created. And so I do have a wonderful family. I have two daughters, um, both of them, they get ripped whenever I say their age is wrong. They're like, you're making me old or why do you think I'm that young? And I'm like, I don't know, I can't keep up. You just keep growing. So I have two wonderful daughters, an amazing wife of 28. I'll tell you a little fun fact. This is always interesting for people to hear and then they look at me weird. Me and my wife got married. I had to wait till I turned 18. Okay. She was 16. I had to ask her parents to marry her and they had to sign her over to me. So I was her legal guardian for two years. Oh, wow. So for all of you out there, can think back to like when you were 17, if you're a male and going to a father to ask for a hand in marriage of a girl that's 16, that's not even legally married or get married yet. It's an interesting conversation. So <laughs> that being said, we looked at our daughters when they turned 16 and me and my wife said, what do you think? <laughs> like, there's no way. She's still playing with dolls. Like, there's no way. I don't even want to see her like getting married right now. And to this day, they're still not. So they, they don't like me saying that they're available, but they are and they're cute. So <laughs> And they're great girls, but then you got this dad guy. So I don't know if you want any of that, but uh, their mom is awesome. So it's just, you know, I like to share stories. I think we all come from a unique place, but I've done some interesting things and I have a lot of knowledge to share. I'll, I don't like sharing a ton of it, but this is some of it, right? I do a lot in the community and I give back a lot, right? When X is a service was something that was coming out, I helped I don't know. I, I was pretty close to the beginning of it. So what I, me and Jay argue who created it, but we like to laugh and say that we both just kind of stumbled over it. Um, we've done a lot of great things and it's really all about giving back to the community. So you'll find me everywhere and you'll find me in a lot of stuff like this and you will connect, you can connect with me later on LinkedIn and find out more about that. But today we're going to talk about a couple of things. And the first one, I'm going to pause this for just a second is one of the big things that I think I learned in my entire journey in managed services, and, and one of the hard things I think we all learn and we find out the hard way is, you know, we're, for many of you, you may be like I was, right? A technician, right? I started off at AOL. I was there when LOL was created. Like I was there, like I was in the freaking call floor and the rolling on the floor thing was some stupid guy on the phone that fell out of his damn chair like we made that up like we were there right Juan, so, i'm older than you and don't remember that so goodness gracious come on marnie but i mean i was there in the beginning like i still have it right so like it's like the only thing any tech book i've ever created like here it is the pocket internet dictionary right like this is what i worked out of like there was no search engines back then there was this thing called keywords right so Coming along time 
through that, I remember it was like my first journey into tech and I was like, okay, cool. Like I've left this great career. My wife was like, why are you leaving it? You finally started making money at life. And I'm like, eh, I'm going to go do this computer thing. And I quit. And I went and did that, right? Just like many of you. And I, I dived into it and I took this horrible job at AOL and it was like in cancellations. And all I heard all day long was, no, I hate you. No, I don't want you. No, you, you're in I don't know what this is. Like, I have no idea. Like we got a CD, we accidentally put it in my kid. I can't get it off. Like it's ingrained in me. PTSD comes raining back when I even talk about it. I'm like, ah, if I hear a modem sound, I really get freaked out. <laughs> like if any of you guys hear like the handshake, like I'm just like, what is that? Get me away. Right. So, but there was something that I was learning during that time. And I learned it early on too. It was interesting. I, was, I used to sell newspapers and stand in front of grocery stores and churches. And I would watch when these people would get out of their car and I would be able to tell whether or not those people that were going to walk up to me just based on the way they moved and how fast they got out of their car, or the speed in which they did it or the frown on their face, or if the kid was crying or you know, if they were dealing with something in their life, you could read it on them from far away in the parking lot and they'd come walking towards you. And I would know whether or not, and it took me a long time to figure it out, if they were going to buy a newspaper from me, I could pretty much bank on it. And I started to think, what is it to this? Can I like, can I see through people? Like, how do I, how is this working? But it was about paying attention to the movements, right? And while I worked at, and this is starting to build, right? So when I worked at AOL, Oh, all I heard was no's, right? That was it. That's all I was getting. I was in cancellations. They hated me. 300, 200. I remember we took 300 calls one day and my, my supervisor came over and was like, dude, you can't do that. Like you're killing everyone, the team stats. Like you can't just do that. I'm like, I hear the guy next door. All he does is say, hello. Okay. Click. Hello. Click. He's taking like 400 calls a day. Like, why are you getting on me? Like, <laughs> Right. And it, I, it was because I was getting burned out of hearing no. But the cool part about what I was hearing when I was listening, I said, all right, fine. I'm going to like lose my job if I don't do this. So I want to share this with you. And is my screen, it's not being shared. Let me unpause it. It, it is. You're, you've got, there the you big go. thing I want to share here is knowing the no. Because there was, there was something that I actually, as I did it more and more and more and more and more and more and more, and I heard it more and more. And you guys probably know this now. As you hear no's, it's not always no. It's something different. And I started to smell it. And I was like, what is this? Why do I, why, why is this no? And I started to think about it. And I was like, you know what? I just better get used to hearing no, because this is my job. And God, I hope this is in my career for the rest of my life, because I don't know if I'm going to make it. Right. And so I started to embrace the no. I started to say, all right, fine. I'm just going to take it. I hate you, but I don't like you, but I'm going to do it. And I started to make it my friend. I was like, all right, cool. Let's just see how many interesting no's I can get. And then all of a sudden I started to make it my ally and I'd start turning that no around. And then it, ultimately I started to learn to love it. And I know that sounds weird. And if you, you're like, I don't even know what I'm talking, listen to this guy, like what the hell is he talking about? It was that I was uncovering because I couldn't see them. I couldn't do what I used to do when I was sitting in front of the store. I couldn't read their body language to understand it. I was having to listen to all of what they were saying. And I was having to dig and pry and understand and like, hey, what are you, what is it about your life that interests you? And all of a sudden I started grabbing this no and circling it. I say something to my salespeople these days. I trained a hundred and some salespeople on that last MSP. And I said to them, if you get a no in the sales process, it's because you brought it with you. And I say that only for the mere fact that it's maybe along the lines of the fact that you didn't understand all about the product, or maybe you didn't understand about it. So you walked into there thinking we were going to go for a yes. I think I got the yes, but you didn't work out all the no's you could have got, right? So when I hear that now, right, and this is the way I train salespeople, is what part of no didn't you understand? And it's not a negative connotation. Like when someone tells you what part of no didn't you understand, we take it very aggressively. We're like, man, what? Are we talking to me crazy, right? You're like, no, it's the, it's not, no, it's just what didn't you understand? It's a question. It's not, 
what part of it are you hard of hearing or whatever? It's actually ironic if you think about what they're saying. It's like, you don't hear me. You don't understand what I'm saying. And it's not the fact that they're saying no. It's the fact that you haven't done enough work to get me to say yes. Right? And that's where the no dance began, right? Maybe it's, no, I don't understand your value proposition. No, I don't see how this is going to solve my problem or how it's going to work for me. Or, no, I can't afford it. Maybe you, we, and again, back to the no, and it's if you took it in, then maybe we didn't qualify it right. You know, maybe we don't have a program that actually is set for success in this customer environment, right? So knowing the no was super important. Like, I can't even tell you, like, I saw it when I can see you, I can read you, but if I can't see you, then what? And it's the questions that you ask to understand your program, to understand if you're going to get a no. And that's the hardest thing for, I think of us, I mean, geez, we get beat down, right? We go after all these yeses and then we land up over committing. And then the next thing you know, we're like, I had a conversation with MSP just this morning where they did it. And I had to slap their hand. I was like, hold on a second. You went outside of the box. Why did you do it? Oh, well, because we just couldn't say no. You also have to know when you need to say no, right? So there's a flip side of this coin. Understanding the no for them is also understanding the no for you, right? So you've got to meet in the middle here. And this needs to be what we call, to Marnie's point, customer success, right? And then the customer is also me and so is them, right? We have two customers here that need to be, and we should, our business should be a customer and our customer is a customer. So you've got to be able to bridge that gap between both of us saying yes to this relationship, right? So again, back to the removing the no's, take them all out, get them all out of here because I hate the no just as much as you do. I love walking into meetings and I'm sure most of you do where I hear yes. It's like my, it's like my favorite thing. The cool part of walking into a meeting and knowing you're going to get the yes is even better because you have removed all of them from the equation. There is no no there anymore, right? And I used to say that to the sales team and I still teach this way, is that if you do enough research on them and you understand them and they qualify for your program, there is, there's not even a, there's not even a sales cycle there, it's just a close. And even at that, it's not a close, it's just a relationship. So I have a always win mentality. And it's the way I say it's we always win is we either learn a lesson we build a relationship or we close the deal. And I walk into customer meetings and I say the same thing. Two things will happen today. One of two things is we're either going to become friends or we're going to do something together. Both of them are great because I would love to help you in all of your opportunities. And maybe today's not the right day, but in the future it would be a wonderful opportunity. But we want to stay in touch. I want to help you through whatever it is you're dealing with. But I just want to let you know I'm here for you, right? And so... I've already prefaced that from the second I open my mouth that we're going to win, right? Because I'm going to walk out of there and I'm going to say, you know what? It wasn't the right deal for them. And if I look back at my deal autopsy and I say, okay, where was the no? What questions did I ask? What answers did they give me? And why wasn't it a fit? I get to learn the no, right? So I've already learned. I won. Like, I don't have to do that again because I already now know. So like that whole- strikes on the next one of those. Yeah, that repetitive, that insanity cycle. <laughs> like doing the same thing over, like we just keep doing that. I did it forever. I was like, what do you mean you don't want IT services? No, 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 no. You have to have it. And they're like, nope, I don't have to have it. Security? No, it's too expensive, right? And you're like, hmm, all right, let's come at it from a different angle. That's my point, right? So, but if you don't like figure out what your program is and map your nose and understand what that looks like, you'll continue to revert back and just keep finding that same no. And it gets super frustrating and it wears you out. So Amy asked earlier, she's like, I can't wait to hear, I don't want to know the no, right? So now we're learning the no. It's just a matter of a life cycle and the insights to that no, right? So it's really the whole component piece of dictating success within your own program is understanding what it is your program does, how does it do it, What's the meaningful way that you do it? 
And how does it align with the business's needs, right? I do this in an exercise called the value visualizer. And if you come to us with exchange, we do this here. Me and Marnie are probably going to find a way to do it virtually. Um, little maybe surprise down the road. But we'll do this where we actually identify who you are. What are some of the customer's needs, wants, and fears, right? Because as soon as you step on a fear, you're going to land up with some sort of a no, right? So all of these things kind of added together creates a really pretty picture. You already know the no's you're going to go into, so you can build around them. You can interstitch your program into them and then deliver those meaningful outcomes that customers want. I can get past that within the first 30 seconds of having a conversation with somebody. And we're talking about walking, what kind of dogs do we have after that? Like, you know, it's just a matter of repetitive notions of understanding that no, because if you can walk into those, and especially if you guys, um, if you guys focus on a specific industry, your nose get real thin because it's you just a, a rinse and repeat cycle. Right. You can just knock those off and be like, hey, tell you what, let's just shortcut to the chase here. I bet your security is a big issue right now because you can't deal with compliance. I bet you that you're having issues with your network and you're worried about your staff. I bet you that your data is not centralized and it's not secured at this particular moment because you started your business two years ago. And within the first two years, we normally don't focus on the operations of our technology and we don't focus on security at all. So tell you what, I can solve all those problems. Here's the number. And what kind of dog did you say you had? Like, done, right? I already addressed all of your needs, wants, and issues before we even started. And as soon as they feel comfortable with you, oh, well, they know what I need. I don't need to tell them. They're like, miracle workers, right? You get the hero role. And this is what we loved to do, right? I used to tell my VCOs, I'm creating a hero role. This is probably the best job you're ever going to have because you're not gonna get beat up. And that's what I hated, right? I, when I built my model, I built it around not making people's jobs suck to that point, scratch it out, right? Because the more you make somebody's job suck, the more they don't wanna do it, the more I'm gonna not wanna do it. And I love the life cycle insights easy button that they create, right? Like okay. I can't wait for the customer service. Cause like I've been trying to build that forever, like on paper, <laughs> just insanity. Right. And so when you see those operators easy buttons, like it's really important to like bring those in, get those lined up, make them part of your process, embrace them, adapt your program to, you know, and I'm not trying to sell lifecycle insights, right? I don't buy it, but I also don't sell it. And I also, Marnie hasn't let me invest in it. Right. So. <laughs> There's there's a lot of it around how it works that makes it easy to follow a program, right? You're taking the no out of it because now the customers can see success. You got to paint success. The hardest thing I ever did in break fix land and why customers never paid me was because they're like, ah, oh, you know, I don't know about that four hours, man. Like I saw you really do it in two. Like you were only here for like 20 minutes. Like, do I need to pay for an hour? And it was like, how do I provide tangible value to an intangible asset? It killed me the whole I mean, I lost probably five years of my life in my first MSP. And it wasn't even MSP, it was break fix. Back in the day, we were building computers, right? Trying to be better than Gateway, right? Build them cheaper, build them faster than Dell, right? I can build clones for, that are way better than Dell. You got physical support. Dell doesn't come to you. I'm the Dell support authorized service center, right? Been there, been there right there next to you. And I will say this, it's just interesting to hear and see how we've evolved. And it's important that you recognize as an MSP that this, our conversations that we're having are much different. I haven't even really talked technical to you guys this whole time, right? That's kind of the notion of what we're doing. We know what we're doing. We could deliver it, but now we're all, all of a sudden we're becoming business strategists, right? Everybody here, I guarantee is like, I need a strategy. And I said 2022 last year was going to be the year of the strategic MSP. So cheers to everybody on this freaking call because yeah. you guys are the first ones in the first quarter of the year that are like, all right, I got to go get strategic. So high five <laughs> to everybody for the strategic MSP of 2022. You are the new class of awesome. Right. So it's really cool to see you guys 
forward thinking of what's supposed to be happening. Because there's a lot of people who are still trying to figure out like how to do stack explanation. Like that's dead. I do monitoring, maintenance, and management. That's I can make sure I sell uptime. Okay. <laughs> right. And I'm not saying that talk track is bad. We all have something similar. But you got to think about this. And I, I, let's go from no to no, right? I want to talk about this and I better make sure I have time. I don't even have a timer. Mario, you're going to have to like tell me, like, <laughs> go away if like I'm running long. So I will. <laughs> what do we got here? Let's answer a quick question, couple of questions here. Uh, oh. So this is. I see there's the chat blowing up here, oh, and I'm no, not paying yeah, attention Kurt to it. Has to jump out, but he said thank yeah. you for entertaining and yeah. educational as always. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Juan. I, I completely agree with your philosophy, and that's how we deal with our clients too. So it's always good to get the reinforcement. Well, you come later, and we'll I'll give you a uh, buy a beer and reinforce that even more. <laughs> okay, He's great. A gin guy. <laughs> and bourbon. Gin it is. And bourbon. bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you. Thanks, Kirk. Um, so I want I love the way and I, that is very much my strategy. Actually, it was my parenting strategy as well. Like, I bet you are all of these things. Right. And so when they yeah. realize that, like, you've taken the fuss and the whining out because like you're right there with them. Yep. I am all of those things. Um, and, and how are we going to solve it? You know who I am. Right. I think that's huge. It is. And here's the thing, right? So like, it's not like it just comes to us right away, right? It, it's, it, it, it took me a long time to like figure it out. I spent a lot of time in here trying to like work it out. I played chess with the movements. I'm trying to figure out how to constantly win. That's what we all do, right? I don't think any of us here is business owners or, or BCIOs or TAMs or anything hate, like to lose. And that's why we're trying to push ourselves a little further to do something more. And that's how I started AOL. Like when I got into tech, I didn't even know how to fix a computer. And I just got so tired of it. Like that's when I went for my first A plus. It was like, because if I could fix the computers over the phone, like they'll stick around because a lot of the issues they had were that their PCs didn't work. So that's where I learned how to listen to modem sounds because, and then understand the handshake to know where the break in the chain was, right? So like, it's all about learning to listen to your customer, right? My customer at the time was a computer, which was creating a bad output, right? They were like, like, I'm not going to work. I'm not going to get on. Now, I couldn't solve AOL's modem issue problems with not having enough lines, but but I could solve a lot of their problems. And I found a lot about people. And, and during that time, you know what I did? Just kind of backing up before the no, the no. I would ask people, like, what were their interests in what they wanted to look for? What are you interested in your life? What are the things that you're most important to? Oh, well, I like golf or I like cigars or this. Hey, you know what? Try keyword golf. Tell you what, do me a favor stick around for 30 days. How about I follow up and see how you're doing on this golf thing? Maybe I can send you some more links and then let, let's see how that goes. And they'd stick around. And that's how I got to the top of cancellations, right? And then I started fixing people's PCs. I remember my call time went high because I was like head down <laughs> on the phone, like testing my A plus on all these people, like rebuilding their PCs. Like, okay, now go ahead and pull that dip switch and then go ahead and move it over <laughs> one and then go ahead and pull out. Now make sure you touch the case first before you actually pull that memory stick out. <laughs> oh, you already did it. Okay. Let's cross our fingers and hope that that comes up. Right. <laughs> uh, oh, don't, don't unplug that cord yet. Not that one. No. Okay. Yeah. That one. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's probably not going to boot again. Uh, so, I mean, <laughs> It's listening to your customers, it's the same thing then as it is now, right? We've all got two ears, we know how to use them. We see with two eyes what the customers are interacting with, even on video, like you guys are doing now, for 20% of you are on video, or <laughs> see or not. Let me tell you a little story. Knowing all that, I entered into a competition, right? You guys saw that X is a service thing a while ago. <laughs> what I decided was, look, my sales team, I had to struggle with those guys because they wanted to tell me I was wrong. They said, Juan, I've been selling my whole life. You can't come in here and tell me that I should only ask a few questions and then bring somebody else in to close the deal. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And I'm like, well, because you can't have the conversation about the technical side about our program because it would take me too long to train you to do that. So like if I cut you off here and put a VCIO or a TAM right here, it's much more meaningful, right? So I had to break all their mindsets. They've been in sales a hundred thousand years and 
I wasn't going to change them. And so I decided I'm going to go and prove it to them that this works. So I decided, and that X is a service magazine, that's when I created X as a service, right? I created flat, simple rate pricing. But where I did it was at Shark Tank. And I decided one day, I was already working on X as a service. I had a whole program of hardware and professional services built out, ready to go. And I was working on this with a company you guys may know, you may love, you may hate. I don't represent them. So if you don't like them, don't put nasty grams in the chat. Hewlett Packard, right? HP. <laughs> I know. No, I'm not, I, don't, I don't work from. So I was working with HP because I was building devices as a service into my program. And so we had sold so much hardware that HP came and said, what the hell are you doing? And then they said, hey, we'd like you to help us with this thing. And I helped them create HP DAS. Now, I know it doesn't mean desktop as a service. It was device as a service. They took my model and basically copied the whole thing and then put it into play. And we went and sold it to a company that is called WeWork. You all know WeWork? Yep. And then he took about four pounds of weed on the plane. And I don't know what happened. <laughs> that was like the craziest time in the history of man. I'm like, everyone's looking at me like, dude, what's up with this deal on WeWork that you launched? Like, what? <laughs> like the dude's in it, he's going to what happened to him i was like i don't know man i don't represent him <laughs> so we create this hp DAS program right and i was putting it in the sales reps and i said you know what i think i'm going to do i told hp i said there's a thing coming up called shark tank it's msp shark tank i said if i get on that show would you do me a favor and like bring up film crew and like advertise like this whole HP devices service and X is a service thing. And we were having some drinks. I remember it was in Austin and, and the rep still tells the story. And she said, sure, Juan, <laughs> you go ahead and do that. And we'll be right next to you. And I said, okay. And I wanted to prove to the sales team that our model was revolutionary, that we had the next best thing. And so I remember getting notified. I was on vacation. My wife had made me put my phone down. We're in California. And she's like, you put touch that phone and I will cut your hand off. She didn't say that, but I could see it in her eyes. <laughs> uh, she's like, you work too much and you need to spend some time with us. That picture of us on the beach is from that trip. So you can tell that I put the phone down because I was in the water. So number one thing. So we get the notification. I was like, can I please just check the phone? Like I'm supposed to get notified whether or not we made it. And like, I'm going to look kind of talk this up a little bit so hopefully I made it on to the show and so sure enough I got the email oh my god I almost passed out I was assuming that I wasn't going to go right so I got super excited about dude it made it on so we were like all excited all right cool and I told her and she's like I thought you weren't supposed to touch your phone <laughs> I was like no did you just hear what I just said though like we got all the freaking thing she's like cool but you're not supposed to be touching the phone and so anyway long story short we're up in boston and i remember this we work thing right i'm in boston talking to the corporate headquarters that we work got hp there with me and i'm like hey get ready because we're going to go to new york next week or actually we were in new york i'm sorry we were in new york and we work and we were going to go to boston the following week to do this this thing so they sent me a thing and said hey you need to modify your whole slide deck it's way too long uh you need to crunch it down to like eight slides and I was like, hold on, I sent you 62. <laughs> so oh my I had a, yeah, so I'm in Boston. My wife, we're, we're in New York and I'm like down in the financial district. And my wife was like all excited because I drug her with me to like this little tiny hotel. I don't know if you guys have ever stayed in New York, but I don't know what that's about. I'm from, tiny. I'm from Texas. I know what space means. Yeah, you roll out know. of bed into the bathroom in New York if you can roll over in the bed without falling on the There was an opening, like it was just like into the bathroom. Yeah. And then the elevators went down. So like we were stuck in these little corridors, like it was bad. She doesn't let me forget about this day. So I promised her we we're going to go see the, you know, Statue okay. of Liberty, go do the tourist thing. And when I got the notification, I had to modify it. It killed our whole weekend because we we're presenting the next week and I had to do it. So I spent all of Saturday working till nighttime and here's the best part that night i started in the morning she sat on the bed we didn't go outside we didn't eat nothing and at night nine o'clock that night we go downstairs and she's like so what do you think you good and i was just like 
yeah, I think I'm all right. She's like, so did you address the customer's needs? And I just looked at her with like the most cross face. And I was like, you're right. It is all wrong. All of it's wrong. The whole thing, everything I just did, you're right. I didn't do what I always say to do. And I got to redo it. <laughs> she was like, are you kidding me? We spent all day in the freaking hotel. And I was like, let's go upstairs. I'll finish it in 10 minutes. I know exactly what I need to do. Went up, finished it 10 minutes. We were at eating flatas across the street at this little Mexican restaurant, having a margarita in like an hour. And I was like, and I hit sand right before midnight. And I was like, all right, hopefully that little place is still open. And they were open late, but all they served was tacos. So I make it sound cool, but it was like really the last thing. I'm kind of lucky I fed her. She was upset. <laughs> anyway, from that point, I send it off. And then we go to the thing, right? We go to the show. And I'm excited to be there, man. I'm like on stage. I'm going to prove the sales team that I got on stage and presented the program. I'm not going to win. I don't even care about winning. It's not even about that. I, I'm here. All I got to do is present it. And the sales team will have to listen to me. They were already listening, but they weren't listening with both ears. They were listening with like half an ear. And so I get up there. I remember the night before we go do a thing and they say there's a reg uh, like a, uh, a practice session the day before. And we go to the practice session. And I'm talking to all the other MSPs and I'm like, man, I'm so excited here. Like, I don't even care. Like, I'm to tell you what I'm doing. And they're looking at me like, we don't want to know you. <laughs> and so I'm giving away the farm, right? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to talk about this, everything as a service thing. They're like, okay, cool, dude, whatever. And we get ready to go on stage to do the practice. And uh, when we get ready to go on stage, they're like, we don't want to do this. We don't want to practice in front of everyone. We want it special. And they're like, we don't have time for everyone to like not be here. And I said, well, hey, what if I give up my time? I'm just here to have fun. I'm not here to try to win. I'm just going to give, I'll give up my time. Y'all have my time. If I give up my time, can they all practice? And they were like, yeah, but why would you do that? And I was like, I'm just here to have fun. I just wanted to come to have fun. So I go back home to the part, the hotel across the street. And we watch storage wars. And my wife is looking at me and she's like, you don't want to practice. And I was like, nah, we're fine. If I don't know what I'm talking about, then I shouldn't be here. And she's like, I just watched you spend two days in a hotel room. You don't, I don't know if you know the content. I was like, yeah, yeah we're good. Let's watch storage wars. This guy's saying yep a lot. That's about, <laughs> I'm serious, a heart attack, right? So she's like, are you even going to iron your clothes for tomorrow? I was like, in a minute, this is good. Like he just found a gun. Like and I'm being funny about it, but I was just trying to focus on something other than being completely nervous. So I get all my stuff together. And as a matter of fact, these didn't make it with me. And I'm going to show you guys this. So I, uh, oh, these are the, the missing oh man, pieces. I tell you, there's the missing piece of this story. And I'll show you in a second. But we get there. We go do the thing. Uh, everyone, they say, hey, Juan, you know what? You're going to be the last person up because you decided to not practice. So you're going to get to see everybody else. And hopefully you can figure it out, buddy. And I was like, all right, cool you know, let's go ahead and, and do that. And so I, the first person goes up there and immediately when he goes up there, he goes long. And then Barb Cochran's up there on stage. Right. And she goes, they cut him off. They're like, Hey, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Your time's up. Sorry. That's it. And he's like, wait, hold on a second. Like what's up. And he's like, no, you're out. You got to get off stage. And Barb goes, can I give you any feedback? Is it okay? Can we do that now? And she goes, he, they go, yeah. And they're like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I, I, I couldn't make sense of anything you said. You handed me some cool shirt. Like you asked me to put a piece of cardboard on my face. Like, I'm not going to put my phone in this trash and put it on my face. What's wrong with you? And I was like, oh, it's going to get real in here. <laughs> and so then the next person goes, right? These two guys, these two VCAOs get up there and they start dropping bombs and they got like a video production, like they're in capes. They got all this stuff and tchotchkes. And I'm like, I'm losing to them for sure. Like they're good like that. There's money in that. And then she tells them on the end, she's like, you guys are boring. And when you put the capes on, what is that? Are you clowns? Like, what is this? And I was like, oh no, this isn't going well at all. <laughs> and I immediately started to feel this sinking feeling inside of me. Like 
I'm looking at my phone, trying to go through my slides like, crap, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm going to get embarrassed up here. Does anyone know I'm here? Okay, no, I didn't tell that many people. I can get out of this still. Do I have IBS? Maybe I can get out of it. Maybe I can get sick real quick. <laughs> like I, I immediately started, like my head was like, bro, you need to go. Like get out of this now. And I'm like, okay, my wife's here. She'll cover for me. I could like HP. Oh yeah, they did. They brought a camera crew. Shit. Uh, and then the next team goes up. And it's a husband wife team and they do an amazing job an amazing job i'm like oh my god they're freaking badass excuse my language but they're great and i was like i'm losing to them and then barb says well what does she do and what do you do and he's like oh i'm the owner of the business and she doesn't she yeah she just she just sits back here and she goes really and she goes can you step up for a second she goes you know what you need to get a divorce from him and you need to leave her and oh man, I was like, oh, it's it's over, dude. Like if divorce hits the stage, we're done. And I was like, I'm still scrolling, trying to maintain some composure in that front row, just like, mm -hmm. oh my God. And I remember for the first time, I speak on stages all the time, all the time. First time in my life, I actually found out what they call stage fright. I got to a point when I remember they announced my name, <laughs> started to walk up, right? I hit the stage. And I walk up the, the stairs and I'm standing there and they introduce me and I look down and I don't say anything for like the first couple seconds because I forgot my name. I didn't even know who I was. <laughs> I said, well, everybody, my name in all faith, I said this and I didn't know what was going to come out next. My name is Juan Fernandez and it just came out and I was like, <laughs> and my wife even sat back after and she, goes, she goes, what the hell happened to you? Like, where did you go for the first 10 seconds? Like that wasn't you. And then all of a sudden you got better, but what was that? And I was like, I don't know. So I go through the whole thing. I do my spiel. I start talking about removing the no, right? I start just hammering it. It's talking about the future of managed services. I even bold enough to say, welcome to the future. Right. And I just start dropping X as a service and all these men things and talking about business outcomes and service delivery and all of it intertwined for a flat rate price. And this is what you're looking for, not what you asked for. I even said that on stage. And I said, not only that, but I've put all the pricing up here and the meaningful way to do it so that the entire world can see how to be how it's done. Little cocky. I even quoted myself, which I got trash for for many years. Uh, <laughs> I thought it would be cool, right? I only create products and services that everyone would buy and I add so much value that they can't afford not to Juan Fernandez right <laughs> and I got a lot of trash for that but I get up there and you know as soon as I'm done talking it's just quiet like they were into those other people like piranhas and I'm like shit I passed out I'm on the floor and I guarantee I'm gonna wake up staring at the lights aren't I and then all of a sudden I hear, can I give you a piece of advice? And I'm like, oh, here it comes, dude. And so I'm like, sure. What are you thinking? And so Barb Cochran tells me, she goes, you know, you sound very professional, very polished. Considering you've only been doing this for how many years did you say? Four years, five years? I said, yeah, five years. She goes, it's just interesting that you could be doing you because you sound so polished in, in this. And I'm like, well, oh, thank you for that. She goes, but just because you wore a shiny jacket, I don't know that I trust you. And I was like, oh, this, I said, my jacket. And again, this jacket was bright under those lights. I had this when I welcomed to the future thing. I thought my daughters had bought me like this really bright silver shark skin jacket. And I had these cool shades that look like doc from back to the future and i was going to put them on and say welcome to the future i couldn't find the shades they went missing which i'm kind of glad now that they did but she says just because that jacket i said oh my daughters bought me this and they would be happy that you actually noticed this jacket because they gave it to me to be here today and she goes oh well i'm so sorry at that point i apologize if i asked no 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 i said could you imagine if they'd have bought me the pants i'd really look like a fool up here and so she just falls on her face. Everyone's like, dude, you shut Barb Cochran down. <laughs> and they even asked me at the end of it, 
they said, did you, did your daughters really buy you that jacket? And I had told a story behind the stage. I said, man, this jacket's a little tight on me. Cause like my daughter's bought, it. it's a little, and I was telling the contestants, cause they're like, what's up with a shiny jacket, bro. And I was like, <laughs> it's my daughter's dude. I, I told my wear it. And so it was brought to light. And so anyway, she starts diving in and she's like, we love this. Absolutely love this. Everyone loved it. And I was like, holy crap. I think I might've won. Lo and behold, and I'll share this here. And I here's what's missing though, right? I'll share the screen. Let me share it real quick so you guys can see it. But here it is, you guys, right? You can share in this with me. Here it is with me winning with old Barb Cochran up on stage. And there's my bright, shiny jacket. <laughs> and here are the shades that I didn't get to wear. Yeah, I no got proof. I wonder if you had the glasses, if you would have put them on. Oh, or if you I, I actually would have 100% put these on <laughs> because I didn't want them to see me sweat. Oh, <laughs> so fair. look at how shiny I am in that. I'm, <laughs> I'm melting down right there. I couldn't even, when she's right there, when she's talking to me, she's like, hey, freaking awesome job. Let's talk after. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me right now. I was, couldn't even think straight. But to the point, what I did on that stage was I said, the questions that the customer just asked for aren't what they actually wanted. What they wanted was business outcomes. So I gave them a service delivery model that delivered those outcomes. And that's why every single one of those sharks voted unanimously. And then the audience too, probably just because I shut Barb Cochran down, <laughs> right? So there was a fun moment there for everybody and everybody just cheered behind and we had a really great time. So that is the Shark Tank story. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that in some meaningful way, but it really ultimately led back to how to scale an MSP, right? Because at that particular moment, I had figured out something and my sales team now knew we had it. We had the future in our hand and I had given them the confidence in front of a world stage to go out and present this. They didn't even talk. And what I think was the funnest part was they would just go take the Shark Tank video and say, hey, we want to play this for you. And they would never say anything. Want to do an assessment? That's all they said. It was play the video, ask them if they want to do an assessment. And I was like, what are you guys doing? That's not our program. <laughs> Trust me, dude, it's we're killing 100%. <laughs> Everybody knows Shark Tank, man. And, and you're just such a great job. There's no reason for us to reinvent the wheel. I'm like, <laughs> well, that backfired. I wanted you to learn how to do it. Like, right? So it, it gave us the opportunity to figure out how to scale. And from that particular moment, it's been an evolutionary component of understanding the customer's needs, delivering what the customer wanted, understanding how to position it properly, and really building a strategy around the delivery of it. I was able to explain to them when they asked me at Shark Tank in five minutes, I was supposed to tell them how to solve the world's problems, how to address their needs, build a program of success, and then teach them really quickly how to get how and, and tie all that stuff together that fast. And then I got the one thing that I needed was the question, how do you do it? And that's what I love because every single one of those people said, Juan, we want to know more. Like, hold on, let's unpack this a little bit because we like what you did for the product model and this, that, and the other. And I was like, that's all we want, right? It's them to talk more to us, right? But you got to build that compelling story and you got to know what your strategy is. So if I'm ever going to give you any advice, anything I can tell you guys today is make sure that your story is built to help you scale your business and then tell that story back to the, your customers. Like, hey, when I built my business, I had a, a difficult time understanding strategy until I incorporated a technology roadmap. And now I can help you grow your business with this process, you know measuring goals on a quarterly business review component. And now I can actually help you enact change and provide digital transformation over 12, 24, 36 months and move you from where you are today to where you wanna be, right? So asking those questions in the beginning, mapping your outputs and understanding that is how you build your scalable process or your program. It's no different in any type of company or process. It's just a matter of us understanding those key components, right? And that's, now I help MSPs do the same thing. And I'm doing the same exact thing that I did building an MSP. 
because the business structures are exactly the same for any other kind of business as they are for you. You've got eight things that you need and all of them are technology, especially now in this new remote world, right? So I already know what you need. I already know what you don't want. And I already know that you wanna be successful. So how does your program make them successful, right? So I created the MSP Growth Coalition to teach MSPs how to be successful, right? I love nothing more than to see an MSP, a business owner, smile and be like, I did it. Like that makes, gets me up in the morning, right? Because I remember being the guy that said, I don't know how to do this. Like this, I don't get this. Like I never going to figure this out. So I went back to figure out how to make that work. And now we have a repeatable process and a program. But from that, I don't want you to think that it's not possible, right? Because it is. You just have to understand. And that's what I think Lifecycle Insights is helping you guys do. So if you guys haven't looked at it, you should, because it helps you build a strategy, not only for your internal business, but plus your customers, right? You can show that tangible, that untangible thing we talked about in the beginning, which is our professional services, which is the most profitable thing we do and intertwined with all of the outputs from a hardware or a software or other component, project service, packaging component over time. It'll be important when you start to scale your business because you'll want to know customer profitability. Am I even making money with this guy? Because if I'm not, I shouldn't be working with him, right? We do that exercise where we look at all the customers and we look at what we did with them in the last 12 months and we break it down on what we did with them. The important piece to understand is what are we doing with them? And that's where you have to focus a lot because if it's not meaningful and it's not profitable, I say this and I said it on PAX 8 the other day and everyone ripped it off immediately. They like started changing their their three digit characters in the back of their name. Matt Lee has like 400 of them on the back of his name. And he changed his down to PPP. And I said, you have to build a profit protection plan. You have to build a profit protection plan. And so everyone was like, are you down with PPP now? And I was like, <laughs> come on. We're all down with profit protection plans. You know me, right? <laughs> That's so it was, it was hilarious. They were like, we got to do this again. But from that, you guys, I love it. Right. I love everything that I've done. I love everything that I can share. I love everything that I could possibly ever put out. Me and Marnie are always trying to figure out meaningful ways to share our information. We got something in the works. Oh. Obviously, she mentioned to you a little earlier. Uh, from that, I do definitely, uh, if you guys are interested and want some, you know, recipes on MSP stuff, you guys feel free to like hit me up on LinkedIn. I will share this so you have it. Ping me on LinkedIn. That's me. You'll get tired of seeing my face, I'm sure. You'll be like, <laughs> all right, why did I ever friend this dude? To Marnie's point earlier, we're going to be at CCF. We're going to be doing some really cool freaking stuff at CCF. Come help us with what we're going to be doing because you coming will be like, you'll have so much fun. Trust me, me and Marnie are going to be doing something super fun there. I can't spoil the surprise. But if you guys go to my LinkedIn, and I'll throw it in the chat, actually. Hold on a second here. Let me go do this here. If you go do this, you guys can, like, I'm going to get you in the show. So for those of you that want to go to Chicago, I don't know if it's going to be warm in March or not. But if it isn't, hold on a second. Why can't I go in the chat? Let me throw this in the chat. If you guys use this code, I don't get anything out of this. This is my way to give back. CompTIA was my foundation from AOL. It's put me where I am today. So I love them. CompTIA knows that. Uh, use that link to get into the show. Also, if you guys want to get into Channel Partners Expo, there's a discount pass there for just the basic one. But if you hit me up on LinkedIn, I can get you a VIP pass. You're going to see me and Marnie there, not in the April show, but you'll see us in the fall show for the MSP Expo. And of course, Dallas Exchange will be there talking to where CS, customer experience meets customer success. Like it. What is that? What's that tide look like, Marnie? <laughs> Can be like the like the green water, you know, where it meets in the ocean, like there's fresh water and salt water. <laughs> I like it. I'm a fan. So let me uh like I said, if you guys join us out there, it'd be super fun. I if you need anything, connect with me on LinkedIn. Marnie knows how to get a hold of me. Amy's a new pal. Like 
she may be like, hey, I'm never talking to Juan again, but <laughs> she looks like she likes me so far. <laughs> and Juan, so, I super appreciate you coming. And if anybody has questions for Juan, like you said, reach out to him on LinkedIn. Um, you can always send me emails if you want anonymized information to go to Juan as well. We'll take that. <laughs> I can be yeah, absolutely. Fan. I always say customer success is an English to English translator. So if you need me to translate from it, <laughs> from you to Juan, I can do that too. Oh man, let me tell you what, and I type horribly. Marnie is always catching my typos. We were talking about that earlier. I was like, <laughs> don't expect punctuation if you're emailing me. I just don't do it. Commas don't even exist. I'm an engineer and I typed code for your. I know those as syntax, and none of what I type is syntax. <laughs> it's all plain English. ASCII text. I like it. Well, thank you so much. That's perfect timing too. We're kind of at the end of our hour. So I will let folks go and have, again, as we said at the beginning, like, I'm sorry, it's Friday, but Monday is coming. No, just kidding. Have good weekends, everybody. Bye, everybody.